Yeah. I'm going to take the easy way out and go because he's on fire at the moment and he loved it. <laughs> and then take it from there. Well, I go see. Because yeah. it's the greatest Irish film that's ever been made. Right. <laughs> it's that close. Because it's the love child of Train Spotting and yeah. Adam and Paul. Someone said to me earlier, you know, because people say that, like Train Spotting and Adam and Paul, I goes, it's like any kind of movie that's about something. Someone goes, it's like Rocky meets Thing, you know, it's like Rocky meets Jurassic Park. So it's kind of like, it's like, it's, it's better than seeing Sylvester Stallone knock out a dinosaur. <laughs> that's what it's like. It's better than that. I'm We're in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, what else could you want? Those two blokes are mildly aware of who they are. Now they're in a movie. Come see it. It's like Chris Pratt twice, but you know, with better hair. Um. Yeah. Well, it, it was. It, it felt kind of like a theatre kind of thing when you were writing the script. You know, that was kind of something a world I was quite used to. Mm -hmm. But um, when it was on set, that was a bit mad. You know, it's kind of like a mad, like playing make believe all of a sudden. You know, like as a kid, and then all of a sudden, like the uh, the real life stuff is there. You know, that kind of way. Like yeah, so all of these kind of things that you would imagine that you conjured up on stage, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're given physical form uh, yeah. uh, in front of you. You know, so that the, the filming of it was great. And filming of it was actually was the most pleasurable experience I'd say, you know, in the sense that like it wasn't actually that much hassle, it was like a lot of fun to do, you know. But yeah. um but yeah, it was it was a, it was a great great thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean like that's it's kinda of, it's it's a bit of a dream in that way. Like if you kinda of think like things like this don't happen. You don't see many things like that that go from I guess you know page to stage to screen and, and in the way that this did and then to for me and Emmett then to be able to sort of play those two characters and for them to be fleshed out with like some of the best actors mm -hmm. that we know, you know? Yeah. And to watch them take that and that take flight and watch the lads do behind the camera what they do. And uh, I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's how the journey of that itself is super exciting and kind of crazy and cool. Yeah. And that, you know? um, we were only saying this earlier, you know, like ultimately, like any kind of play or any kind of movie you make, piece of entertainment mm -hmm. and you owe people a good time mm -hmm. so if they've kind of got a babysitter or they're having a film and like you ever feel that like you go to a movie and it's a bad movie and you feel yeah. skanked yeah you know yeah, there you go so good. damn you <laughs> damn the people that made this piece of crap so what the, the, the ultimate kind of drive behind any kind of thing is essentially to give people a good time and they go mm -hmm. out to the cinema so they know that when they go to the cinema they're going to get a good comedy they're going to get a family drama and, mm -hmm. and and they're going to get something that they'll enjoy and make them feel a particular way because mm -hmm. movies can do that to you uh, and if there's a lesson somewhere in that about hypocrisy around various different social issues, then all the better because sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of social issues don't get talked about. But ultimately, it starts as a piece of entertainment, and one of the, I suppose, byproducts of it would be that there might be something that might deal with issues that are close to a lot of people's hearts, mm -hmm. especially homelessness and especially drug addiction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all down to that's Johnny. all down to Johnny Moy. Yeah, Johnny Moy, yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all down to Johnny Moy, who is. You know, one of the godfathers of worst dance music. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, it's fascinating though. Yeah. I did an interview recently for something with, with Johnny, and I, I don't really know Johnny, and, um, and he, he was talking about like tr trawling through like thousands of tracks and yeah. then having all these issues with, you know, copyrights and samples. And if there's like four bars of someone's track in there, you've got to pay them this much and you wow. can't get your hands on this music. And it's fascinating. And like, yeah. having seen it, just to see what he did with the music. It's kind of amazing. I don't know, I, I don't know, I just don't understand how you can do that. Yeah. I don't get but he's, he's one of those proper, like you know, tuno foils, I suppose you call them, or like, uh, <laughs> you know, like a cinephile, like, you know, totally. he's, uh, he, the, the, these DJs and the kind of the world that they're from, they're all crate diggers. You know, they go through all things. So like, I know house DJs that are good friends of mine, they'll go and try and find like a deleted disco track. Uh -huh. And that in itself is a kind of massive thing. You have to go out hunting. So they yeah. have encyclopedic knowledge of the tunes. So this, the move, the music in this movie runs the gamut from the early 1990s, late 1980s, all the way up to kind of like 2018. So mm -hmm. you've got nearly 30 years there of the history of dance music in Ireland, all kind of in one movie. So the, mu the music isn't just necessarily about now or 10 mm -hmm. years ago or 20 years ago. It's across the whole board. And that's Johnny Moy and our producers, uh, uh, Mike Donnelly and Dave Leahy, you know, kind of uh, getting all those tracks. But that's the soundtrack is... Jelly. only feel very good about that. I mean, that's yeah. the two great films. Uh, I mean, Adam and Paul, I adore, Train Spot, I adore, yeah, I'll take that. It's grand. Yeah. Yeah, it was the same. Yeah, like Adam and Paul is one of the, it's kind of become one of those movies now that's kind of been, like, you know, uh, a cultural landmark, you know what I mean, in Irish mm -hmm. cinema. And obviously Train Spot was the same for British cinema. So, you Sorry. know, when they throw two of those together, you go, that's amazing. Absolutely. I'll take that. Yeah, and I, I think with Adam and Paul, especially, it's kind of, that being an Irish film, we had Marco Halloran is in the film, a little, 
No, the cat. Oh yeah, there's a kind of passing to the next generation. And I know myself even playing a, playing a heroin addict in the movie. Like I don't know of any other Irish films where who was a sort of a yeah. central character that was a heroin addict. And, yeah. and so to kind of yeah. be dealing with that again on screen and again, in, hopefully in the way that the, the lads did when they did yeah. Adam and Paul, that it wasn't cartoon and it wasn't sort of cliche and that was very That's important That's the main thing, us. yeah. Myself and Emma talked about that, I mean, years ago, about, about it n- never being cliched or silly mm-hmm. or, you know, cartoon heroin addict. Yeah, the representation, the representation either of people that live along the fault lines of society is often kind of quite broad or it's yeah. sketched out. So there was a real kind of need to, you know, draw something that had heart that was three dimensional and that actually if there is a character, they're not just a heroin addict, they're mm-hmm. a heroin addict that has a life. Yeah. So when you see them on the street, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg yeah. or a huge gamut of kind of problems that they had living within this state, who they are, who that type of person is. And it was the same with Adam and Paul. And whereas that was more kind of like a, you know, it was like a Laurel and Hardy kind of like trip through Dublin. It was a very French mm-hmm. kind of film in some mm-hmm. ways. This is much more of a kind of, um, I think, a kind of working class family drama. Mm-hmm.